The ultimate ultra bash prompt is what today's video is about. And I love my bash prompt. This is what I do anytime I launch it and I can easily get around. I can just do a hotkey, see my recent things, navigate folders very easily. I have a whole bunch, a host of options. And if I do CDs, I have like automatic directories. We got easy ways to navigate and go up tons of aliases we can just get around so quick and it feels so good so let's get into setting up this prompt in today's video so to start out the setup is pretty easy on my website just christitis.com forward slash my bash i can easily have this you just copy it you come back into your terminal of choice paste it in here it'll go ahead and set up all the dependencies and things that are needed to be installed if, for instance, it misses any of those dependencies when you launch it, you can do an install. And if you hit install bash RC support, this is going to detect your entire distribution, any missing packages. I don't have any here, so there's no packages that need to be installed. But if there is any missing packages, it'll install them for you. And once it's all set up, you'll notice every time it launches, it runs something called FastFish. And you might be thinking, well, that's really fast and it's really cool looking. What happened here, Titus? <laughs> well, I'm glad you asked. First off, why not NeoFetch? NeoFetch is dead. As of April 26, it, it basically from GitHub farmers, people that I guess want to inflate their GitHub numbers, weirdos uh <laughs> the project maintainer was like i'm tired of all these stupid commits from people i'm done i'm out and he quit but as i was looking for alternatives fast fetch is kind of what i landed on it's run and c so it's extremely fast where neo fetch was always a little slow and fast fetch you can theme out it has a really good customization so i use fast fetch now uh, to list out what my hardware is what the os is what i'm using for the actual terminal and window manager here and then just uptime and age i just like seeing this but as far as quality of life improvements i also have aliases for like copy so it expands copy to be more uh uh, descriptive so whenever I'm doing like an LS you'll notice I can just do copy and if it was a large file when I go to copy it'll show a progress bar and give you a little bit more interactive to tell you what's going on with your system and you're not just w sitting there waiting and going is it copying I think so uh, likewise when it comes to the extract this is something in Linux that uh, in your other operating systems a lot of times there's only like zip files for the most part or you have to open up a all-in-one utility like pzip or something or 7-zip to grab some of these I went ahead and made just a CLI extract function. And what this does is anytime you run into an actual zip file, and I don't think I have any here, but I would just go extract. Oh, here's net login. Let's extract that. So we'll just hit extract and then net login. And then it extracts everything right there. So when I look at this, we now have all the stuff from net login directly in here. And it makes it very easy. You might notice too, when I'm doing my CD, it actually lists everything on every CD. Now, if I don't want that functionality, I just use Zoxide. And let's say I wanna just jump, jump directly to a directory, just using the Z to jump with that integration is kind of how I achieve that. And likewise, when you see ZI enter, this is what you have. But I don't actually use or type this in anymore because I made a little binding key. So if you hit Control F, it automatically types out Zoxide, hits enter, and then I can just go, oh, you know what? Let's go over to website. And then we're over on website and you can kind of see the full path there. So we have some prompt customization and history control. History, I like to have a long history. So if I ever type in a command and I come back in a couple days and go, oh, what was that command? I can't remember it. You got history. And then I'm like, you know what? I was doing or installing something and I can't remember exactly what it was. So I might go history and then just grab Paru. What was I installing last? And then you have all these types of commands and it has such a good history. So, oh, I was using Paru QM. So I can just hit bang sign 5778 and then it will rerun that Paro QM and go, here's all the stuff you've installed through the AUR because I forgot the command and now I just use my history to remember the command. Very powerful, love it. And that's why I like uh, actually having a long history. Now, if you're typing a bunch of bad stuff in the terminal, you might not want to use the history command. 
but most people don't care and they're just like what command was that what did i do and this is an easy way to find out i also kind of changed all the editors to neovim now most people aren't going to like that if you're just getting into linux you might want to do the nano command and you can easily change this up this project's really meant to be forked and made your own but if you do want to get into neovim that's kind of how i do what that aliases do is it converts vim to nvim so if i go neovim or vim fs tab instead of launching vim it's actually converting it to nvim so you can see i'm actually in neovim uh, just basic quality of life but i obviously change this to your terminal editor of choice and and some people just wanted to launch a gui editor as well and you can do that like if you want to do g edit and you're like a, a gnome user that's cool too or kate for those kde users instead of actually editing in the actual act terminal it just depends on your preference all this is meant to be changed. All I'm doing is kind of showing you the door, what can be customized, and then changing it to your needs is really what I'm aiming to get at here. As far as color formatting, you notice almost everything as I'm flying around is colored. I really like that. So when I'm in, let's say the home directory, I can see, hey, green, that's executable. Blue, that's a directory. White, that means it's just a regular file with no executable or run privileges, which is good. If it's red like this, it's probably a broken path, meaning it's not valid. So if I try to go steam path, it's not gonna send a directory. So that is actually a bad link. So I can hit steam path, remove, and then it removes it. But there's another quality of life. You see how it says trash is trashed in here. Well, whenever I do the RM command normally, it's not very safe because if you delete it and you're like, oh crap, I need that file, you can't get it back but with trash CLI you can, and what I do is just re-alias RM to trash CLI. So if I go trash list, you can see, hey, here's everything in my trash file. And if I go trash restore and steam path, okay, what file do you wanna store? Zero. So now if I do LS, it's back. But honestly, I don't even want that. So I'm, we're gonna go ahead and trash it again. So you have those safety features, you have the navigation features. Uh, we went over all that. As far as system information, there's actually some really cool stuff here uh, where if you need your distro distribution, it'll tell you, hey, you're on Arch. Or you can type ver and then it'll spit out the version. Now you might be thinking, well, that's a fancy cat, right? Well, whenever you type cat, let's say uh, cat, let's do it, embers adrift desktop. You'll notice my cat is pretty verbose and it shows different line numbers and I prefer this because regular cat it just gives this raw file there's no coloring or differentiating so usually just get a wall of white text and I don't like that what this is actually doing it's an alias to bat cat or bat depending on your distro I, I made this row Debian arch all compatible and what this does is it goes ahead and converts that cat command to bat so what bat is, and let's, let's just grab Steam Desktop this time, same thing, but you can navigate the file a lot easier and you can see, okay, this is the end of the file, this is the beginning of the file, and then quit out. And cat is just taking that command and translating it to bat. I like that. Anytime I'm viewing files, I just, by you know muscle memory, always do cat. That's why I make that alias to bat. There's also some configuration. This is mainly for if I'm working on specific web servers. I still have some LAMP stacks, some client sites that are like, okay, we're using WordPress. I'm like, ugh, I would never use that for my site, but I understand a lot of the world works in these CMS systems. So whenever I'm doing that, I do have like Apache and PHP config uh, functions. So you can easily get into the configuration file and change things around. So like if you wanted to up your PHP size limit for uploads and your, you know, th those types of things on the website, you, you're going to want that PHP command. I don't think I have PHP config installed here. Yeah, it, I don't even have uh, PHP installed on this system. But if I had a LAMP stack and I use these quite often in, in actual server systems, that's the, the reason for like an Apache config or a PHP config. Uh, neat little functions just add a little quality of life. 
And then of course, just the regular theming. Now I might change this up a little bit. This is my current Starship theme. And uh, you can see there's some special characters. If it doesn't look right, uh, what you need to do is change your font that your terminal is using to a nerd font. I personally like uh, Meslo LGS. And if you're looking for these, you can just go nerdfont.com, nerdfonts.com, and go to downloads. And there's a bunch of to choose from. Some of the big ones that most people love are like Cascadia Cove nerd font is a big one. Fire a code, another one I see quite often. You'd think you see more hack, but most people don't like that. Azveca is another one that's really uh, a lot of people like. JetBrains Mono is probably one of the most clear and used nerd fonts out there. And then Meslo LG nerd font is my personal favorite. But again, it just depends on what you you want, how you, you like your fonts. Fonts are so specific. That's why I didn't really include the install with this one. Uh, I wanted to just say, hey, I want to give you the option. You just set up your font, your nerd font, how you like it in your terminal. Set that, and then uh, this will look proper. So if you do see like a bunch of like squares and it's not formatting correctly, you just need to install the nerd font. And if you need to know where to copy those fonts on any any basically Unix or, or Linux based system, the proper way to put these is in a local share fonts folder like this. This is where it should be. You got your home folder right here. You have the dot local share fonts. And then from the dot local share fonts, you should be able to get your fonts going. So this is a, a, a great one. Highly recommend doing your fonts for your terminal. And that's all I have for you today. Let me know your thoughts down in the comments section, and I'll see you in the next one.